Between 1945 and 1988, 13 million tons of uranium ore were mined for the U.S. government by the Navajo people, who were not told of the dangers. This is one of many such stories of indigenous people in America, of what is known and unknown, of what is unearthed and cannot be reburied. Right from the beginning, they should have told the families to live away from the mine site. The mines were right there. That is the way the families lived. Children were exposed to it and it contaminated our food and our drinking water. They drank that water. They did not know it was bad water. The Navajo Nation has 500 uncleaned uranium mines and mills which were vital for nuclear weapon production. The procedures for extracting what was needed from uranium ore were conceived in the Princeton Chemistry Department. The ore was mined and refined by the U.S. government private contractors within the Navajo Nation. At the time, they should have provided washing machines so the miners could wash their clothes. Instead, it was like herding sheep into a field of stickers. Back then in those years, jobs were scarce. You do not know where I went to get a job. Thought maybe I could get work and this is what happened. I got a job and I stayed around because of my work and there's probably nothing wrong with it but what we call life varies in length. And people, people have been dying off and they don't care how much, they don't care how important the person is, they still die. Professor Berman researched in Princeton University from age 18 until his death at 72. In his childhood, he was set to hang around the golf course retrieving lost golf balls for change. As a young professor, he made a major contribution by introducing potentiometric titrations into the field of analytical chemistry. A titration is defined simply a procedure in which one solution is added to another solution until the chemical reaction between the two solutes is complete in this procedure. The concentration of one solution is known and that of the other is unknown. We had no knowledge about safety. None. We blasted for uranium, and then we would haul it out. That was how it was. We went according to the way we were instructed. Mine shaft was deep into the ground. And we did the wiring, and we hauled out the uranium and the scrap rocks. It was quite a job, because it was quite an incline from the bottom of the mine to the top. We would get tired, we would get thirsty, we would drink the water which was flowing down off the rocks in the mine. That was how we worked. Safety we did not know about. We did not know what it meant, and we never learned about it. I'm grateful for having been invited to talk about the life and accomplishments of Nathaniel Fairman. He was a man of many talents and virtues, an internationally recognized leader in the development. You could clearly see the smoke come out of the mine, and the children would be running through it. This is a big concern to me. He wanted to work, and they should have told us that he was the only one allowed there at the work site, and the families are not allowed. It's what they should have said. Instead, we were all exposed to it. This I do not like. They just watched us. They did not go to schools to educate about the effects of uranium. They might have said, uranium is this way. One could say I could have said this. I had a chance to say this, and I should have said this, they say. Then there are others who are afraid to say anything because they think it will be used against them in the future. 
Because of that, they are afraid to say anything. We, Navajo people, are very respectful. This is a big hindrance to us. For years to come, references to the work of Furman will be made in the literature. As many students and friends will always cherish the memory of this unselfish, friendly man and scientist. To him can be applied the inscription over the fireplace in the Freight Chemistry Library at Princeton, attributed to Ptolemy, which reads in translated form, He is not dead, who hath given new life to knowledge. When making a way through history, it is easy to get lost among the herd of ghosts. You rest with them by the mind shaft to drink and find yourself with a thorny sickness stuck in your side. It is attached to you, following you everywhere as you go about your business in a haze. It is so easy to get lost among the ghosts. You enter the hole in the darkness and forget that there were people like you were with blood, faces, sickness and families that they are not ghosts and never were that they only are because you are because you said you remember and what they knew